Bonsoir, mes amis. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Happy Easter. This is a celebration. It's a great time to be alive here on the planet. I took some online courses last week in learning how to play the piano, so here goes. <laughs> A quickening, yeah, there you go, that's very good. And uh, so welcome one and all, sisters and brothers of planet Earth, I welcome you in the name of the oldest energy on the planet and the cosmos, which is music. The universe was created from music. We are music. And this evening will be a journey an adventure, a quest, in opening up to music. You'll have to excuse me in the sense that a couple months ago I had a fairly severe concussion. So if I don't remember your names, just please tell me your name again. And for that reason, I will be reading a lot of the things that I want to share with you tonight, which are very serious and very sincere and also playful. Thankfully for you, I will not be singing tonight. <laughs> so let me just uh, welcome you on behalf of the First Nations of Southern Vancouver Island. This is a traditional thing we do wherever we are. This is their territory. It's been their territory for 12,000 years, if not 20,000 years. As you can see, I'm wearing a really interesting shirt you can come up and have a look at later, fighting terrorism since 1492. <laughs> I am First Nations as well as Irish, Welsh, English, Scottish, Dutch, Canadian, British, whatever. And I do speak Mohawk. I'd like to thank Miriam for helping me put this together this evening, and my good friend Paul Stein for doing the video and the audio for this uh, so, and that will be available at another time. <clears throat> Just a little bit about myself, because some of you know me and some of you have no idea who this guy is standing up here. Um, I have a very interesting background. I won't say much about it, but my spiritual, psychological autobiography, Living in Two Worlds, is out there. I'm pretty out there, too. I live in the spirit world. 24-7, and I live on this earth plane 24-7. So that's a little unusual, and I've done that since I was born. I've endeavored to spend my entire life as someone who is questing for knowledge and wisdom. So I have 18 years of the University of Toronto in physics, biochemistry, microbiology. I have degrees in psychology, three degrees in philosophy, and uh, multiple PhDs. I'm a neuroscientist, and also I'm a moral philosopher, and I'm interested in social change and history and the great ways that we can become true divine human beings in dealing with this mess that we have here on the planet today. So all of these issues, including social justice, are very close to my heart. I'm also a psychohistorian, so I look over all cultures and civilizations, ancient and modern, to try to figure out what we humans have been doing all this time, where we are now, and what we can do to make it better for our descendants to come, and for all our relations, the Earth Mother and all our animals, plants, and trees. Here's a quote from Reiner Maria Rilke I'd like to share with you. You already own the costly elixir that will heal you. You only have to use it. Inside every one of you is the healing power that will awaken you to whatever you need at this time. Some of you, uh, especially the young ones, are still searching. Of course, we're all young in some ways, aren't we? For their true career, their true path, their true visionary adventure or quest. And yet, to all of us, I say, because some of you that I know are changing, leaving jobs, careers, I'd say, go into your heart and look around you. What needs doing and supporting on the planet today? 
use the outer environment to show you what you can do to make this a better place for yourself and for your family. I've uh, given a lot of these kind of dream quest, vision quest, uh, mythological stories uh, in private workshops that would be a whole weekend or sometimes four years in one case. It's the first time I'm doing it in public and I'm it's sort of its inauguration, so please be kind with me. <laughs> and forgive me if I make mistakes on the piano because my brain and hand are going, what's that chord again? <laughs> so I'm still getting over all of this concussion bit. Nevertheless, it's my wish and goal that we all become inspired through music. And how many of you actually sing or play an instrument? Just put your hand up. OK, so that's like 2 thirds of everybody here. Good, awesome, wonderful. What I'm going to present to you tonight, it's a bit of talking uh, and then some music and back and forth and back and forth. I'll get into that in a moment. And it really is based on Carl Jung, the great psychologist, and his notion of the collective unconscious, the shadow, and the importance of dream symbols and mythology, your personal mythology, to uh, create a life for yourself that's definitely meaningful. And also Joseph Campbell, who was a personal mentor of mine. Many of you know Joseph Campbell. Uh, Transformations of Myth Through Time, all his great work. Um, I knew him in the 70s and 80s quite extensively, and so I feel like in some ways I'm honored to be able to follow in his footsteps even just a tiny bit. <clears throat> I'd like to suggest that there is no mythology left on the planet today. Religions are dying. And I'm going to just say that's a social scientific statement. <clears throat> and many things have, have lost their meaning and their symbolism and their power in all the indigenous cultures of the world and in the first world. The empires are fallen. And they're fighting it out for the last little battle in the sand pit. And what is required of each one of us right now is that we all become heroines and heroes in our own life. That is a calling. No matter what you end up doing in practical terms in your life, we all are called to be heroes and heroines in our life. And I just want to mention a very few that are very close to my heart, and some of them you probably will know. And these are people I know very well and have met. The first one I want to mention is uh, Dr. Viktor Frankl, the great psychiatrist, who I met when I was 16 years of age at Massey Hall in Toronto when he spoke to a sold out crowd. It was so packed, I had to sit on the stage with him, right to beside him, in the chair right beside him. He was in his 80s at the time and blind. Dr. Viktor Frankl was in Auschwitz. He there lost to the concentration camps and to the ovens. His wife, his father, his mother, his children, all his relatives, and all his friends. And he alone survived and set up a psychological study called Logotherapy, or the Search for Meaning. And it's all based on hope and love. Brilliant man, humble man. He's no longer with us, but he, of course, is in spirit. That inspired me to become a psychologist and a social scientist, looking at good and evil. There are a few others I just want to mention. Tashunka Witko, whose name is Crazy Horse. Goyatle, whose name is Geronimo. These are individual men. The first one is Lakota Sioux. The second one is Chiricahua Apache, who, in my native way, having trained in the native ways since I was a very young boy of six years of age, and having given many sweat lodges and vision quests that I've led over my lifetime through the training of these great spiritual native masters. So I want to give it back to them because we're all native to the earth. Every one of us has red blood. And so in some ways, 
the reimagining of our planet today will be through a reengagement with Dendrea, the white buffalo calf woman and Mother Earth, and as we say, all our relations, meaning all the animals, plants, and trees, and rocks, and minerals. And so, on honoring them, I'm inspiring you, hopefully, to connect with many of the great First Nations and indigenous masters from around the world, not just on Turtle Island. Also, putting these all in a row here, Tolstoy, who arguably is one of the greatest writers of all time and social activist, whose greatest and last book, which very few people know, is The Kingdom of God is Within You, where he talks about if you want to find the Christ center in your life, it's within your heart who inspired Gandhi. I've recently reread the letters between Tolstoy and Gandhi, who brought down the British Empire for India. And Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement. This evening I'll be playing a couple of the great songs from the American Civil Rights Movement. And lastly, certainly not least, is Nelson Mandela. I've actually composed a song for Nelson as a celebration, and tonight is meant to be a celebration for all of us. One man, again, one woman or one man have changed history. There's only about 30 in the last 5,000 years. And I'm looking at every one of you, no matter who you are, no matter who you think you are, every one of you can be a visionary leader and world changer when you take the inner journey. And maybe that's why you're here because you know that you can be that visionary leader. All you have to do is soar like the eagle, which is an acronym for surrender, open, allow, release your ego. We'll get to that shortly. You have to kill the ego, actually. And it's reborn with your soul, your transcendent soul. So Nelson Mandela, among many things, was a man who searched for self-determination through 27 years in prison, and he always was keeping to the higher road, being loving, being hopeful, keeping the faith. And every one of us, no matter how tremulous and troublous these tipping point times are now, and they will be getting more to a tipping point soon, I'm sure, we can hold strong when we do the inner journey. And lastly, just to mention that, of course, for me personally, in my life, my connection to all the great spiritual teachers from the Muslim tradition, the Jewish tradition, the Christed tradition, the Jain tradition, the Hindu tradition, and the Buddhist tradition, and the Chinese tradition. So Jesus, Buddha, Lao Tzu, all of these great people have inspired me deeply in my personal life. So this presentation, which, as I say, is the first of many, I'm looking forward to sharing this with more people. It seems to be my path. It's to find yourself as a noble hero of the spirit. That's actually a quote from a mentor of Martin Luther King. Now. There's two sides to our human nature, which I think we all understand really deeply. <clears throat> and before I do that, let me just say something musically for you. Some of you will recognize this song immediately, and others, maybe not so. Britannia. Now, so I'm, I'm not making any judgments of this. I'm a social historian and a moral philosopher. So there, this is a stage of human history 
where empires are changing and falling very quickly. And why I'm playing this is because I want to read something to you from Carl Jung, where he said, society creates our nullification, which we will not stand forever. The only answer is for you to become an independent individual and create your own heroic path. I recently reread 1984 by George Orwell, and I watched the play, which was done in London. And how many of you read, of or read 1984, the book? So you all remember Big Brother, the face that follow, with the eyes that follow you everywhere. You have no independence, no freedom. You can't speak your mind. You can't share your feelings. Anyone can turn you in, whether it's the NSA or the CSIS or anyone. And this is 30 years since 1984. And we are already way deeper into 1984 than most of us realize. That's just a social scientific truth. And last night when I was waking at 3 o'clock, I wrote down these kind of hopefully poetic, uh, <clears throat> alliterative phrases. And I'll just read you some. Now, I want you to know that in the, I read about five books a day, and I read political philosophy, social philosophy, uh, American politics, world history, uh, economics, many books on modern economics, and I'm actually just a, putting together what I've read from people who won the Nobel Prize for economics or politics. It's not my own idea. I'm a scientist. So this society that we live in that's creating our nullification is a collectivized, communalized assembly line of non-thinking, robotic, zombie, unliving dead. That's the opposite of the zombie, which is the living undead. We're the unliving dead. We're already dead, maybe to our soul, to our meaning, to our purpose, to our life. And most of us don't know it. And I get into why that's the case. <clears throat> Materialistic, scientific, repetitive, technologized, reductionistic swarm mentality. That's what most of us live in. Now, whereas I communicate and talk to people of all backgrounds and ages and cultures, I'm really quite interested in the young people of the millennial generation. And I won't go into their university or college debt that they may never have to or be able to repay, or the fact that many of them won't have the jobs that the boomer generation had. And they're going to have a great challenge, and that's why I support most of them in finding entrepreneurial businesses so they can, can survive with their families and children in this really tremulous time. And all the millennials I know, whether they want to admit it or not, understand this, that it's not going to be easy for them. And you have children or friends that age. And this is why I do what I do. <clears throat> Let me just play you a little piece of what it's like to go to a job nine to five, if you have one, and how you feel being there at this work. <clears throat> it's a frenetic, fast-paced society where people are so in their mind and they're running around trying to do things and never feel like they accomplish much. And by the end of the day, they wonder what they did. But they're just like frenetically and frantically running around. And it might feel like this. <laughs> powerful, isn't it? <clears throat> We're 
in a socioeconomic, political, mindless, replicating Borg of business as usual. Business is like a Borg, right? And that's how most people, I think, find it. It's a monotonous, moronic, militarized machine of mass murder. Now we're talking of the military complex. And a merciless, monetized monster that requires mob modification. This is 1984. I got this in the middle of the night. I must have been channeling one of you. I don't know where I got it from. And you know, the more that I read on politics and society, the more I'm aware that there's a masterful, mendacious, dominating, domineering, criminal control of many of the things that go on in our world and our societies. Now, that's all coming from, as a neuroscientist, I want to point out that there are four brains, and the fifth brain we've just found is the heart. The four brains are the reptilian brain, this is Dr. Paul McLean, the limbic brain, which is emotion or fight or flight and fear and selfishness and greed and fighting to get what you need or want and using any criminal technique you can to get it. That's the limbic brain. We all have it. Then there's, that's mammalian. And we have the, the cortex, which is more humanoid, and now the neocortex. The people like HeartMath in California have found that the, the fifth brain is in the heart. It's 50 times more magnetic than the, our head brain, and it's 200 times more electrically charged. The longest distance and the greatest journey for most of us is 12 inches from here to here. And the problem in society and education, I'm really going to pillarize education here, is when you only teach children to use the left brain and the and nothing in the right brain, which is music, creativity, art, drama, poetry, writing, dance, and all these other playful, joyful activities, and the money isn't there, or the educational will isn't there, we're training young people just with the left brain to always just use fear and control for themselves in all the relationships with other people including their families, their societies, and so on. I think that's actually quite criminal. The right brain is increasingly becoming more active and important through emotional intelligence. You've read the books, Daniel Goleman, Intuitional Intelligence. I'd like to add that one more step to spiritual intelligence, where you can access something deep in your heart that's going to heal the splits and the blocks that are in you. So what does it mean to be a true or a real man or woman? It's somebody who is earthy and masculine, with a lot of deep feminine emotion and feeling, is a receptive person, strong, loving, courageous, caring, sensitive, authentic, kind, heartfelt, joyful, free, independent, sisterly, brotherly, a universalist, and harmonious. Now, part of what blocks all of us is fear. Fred Shuttleworth was one of the greatest mentors, along with Randolph, A. Randolph, of Martin Luther King, Jr. Fred Shuttleworth, um, who was attacked many times by the Ku Klux Klan, said this. And he just walked through all their defenses. We are afraid of being afraid. The conquering of fear produces exhilaration. This promotes a self-confidence that is the very father and mother of courage. When the bombs dropped in the second war in London, England, people were still playing out in the street, the kids, women were hanging out their laundry, and they were asked by journalists and other social scientists later, why did you not go running into the house or into the shelters down in the tube? Because we didn't get hit. Somehow, when we're in a time of a great fear, personally, socially, collectively, culturally, you know, sometimes what we can do is stop being afraid of being afraid and just start to be strong. So that's what this concert's for. And uh, I'd like to mention that one of the techniques that is an age-old technique that I use myself, it's been around for 10,000 years, 
is Kundalini Kriya Yoga. It's the neuroscience, the biology of transcendence that helps you move through fears and blockages and emotions and other things in your life to come to some integrative higher spiritual awareness in your heart. It's a consciousness of heroism. All right, so we have three parts to the evening, going back and forth and mostly musical, in which the first part is a departure from the social collective imperative where you were forced to fit into society. It's a mandatory thing that you fit into society according to the society itself. A hero, heroine need to depart. The second step is the initiation, whether it's in the native tradition as a series of vision quests or sweat lodges or in yoga and meditation in, in the Western, previously the Hindu tradition, the Buddhist tradition. And there are many other ways of finding initiations, certainly through psychotherapy. And your own healing crisis will bring that initiation for you, and that's a good thing. And then the final of the three stages is when you come back to the world, having gone through this initiation, and you're strong, and you stay strong, courage, love, strength, devotion, and love in action. So, a couple of weeks ago, I woke up in the middle of the night with this song, which <laughs> is just a little ditty. And one of the most important things in life for people who are uh, pleasers, who like to please everyone else and never do much for themselves, is you need to learn to say no. I heard a few people smile or laugh or gasp at that one. So yes, just learn to say no. If you're on your own path, and you all need to be, each one of us needs to be, you, learn, you need to learn to say no in a kind, open, strong way. And so here's a little song that's about get up, stand up for your rights, so to speak. It's all musical. All right, so you can imagine feeling that and kind of try to come to some inner understanding of why that might be important for you in some situations. Now we're in the getting ready for departing from the society that has a hold on us. The, this is obviously very archetypal. It's very Jungian in a way. It's very Joseph Campbellian, mythological. Of all the creation myths and all the other myths of the world, cross-culturally, as an anthropologist speaking as well, there's one monomyth. And the monomyth of all cultures of all times going back is the myth of the hero, the heroine. That is the one great monomyth of all time and all culture and societies. And so within that, you need to access psychologically, energetically, and consciously the king archetype, the queen archetype, no matter if you're a man or woman, you need the logic of the left hemisphere of the masculine and the logic, because there's logic to the feminine side. Make, make sure you understand the feminine feeling and emotion is logical and important. And that will help you access your own inner hero and heroine. And what we could call the seeker archetype, which is a very keen, whatever stage you're at in your life at this time, the seeker is really core. Now, this next song is about a king from Scotland who is, is about to be killed by the British monarch. We're going back a few hundred years. So he had to retire and sail to the island of Skye.
willing to leave society to go on your own individual journey. And we've all done that various times in our life. In every part of our life cycle, we need to do more of it. You know, and I'm encouraging you as you listen to the music to go into your feelings because the music is the way to open the heart and open the mind and find your inner path. The next song talks about some loneliness of a person. And here's uh, some of the words from the song. My childhood days bring back sad reflections to the happy times I spent so long ago. My childhood friends and my own relations have all passed on now like melting snow. So there's many times in our lives where this happens to us through loss of one kind or another. But when you're actually taking the heroic path to move beyond society to find your own unique way, you often will have to confront your loneliness. And this is a song about that. I'm sure many of you will know this song as well. Now, as your life carries on, you will want to descend deeper and engage the deeper part of your journey and your own adventure and go into the great mystery because the universe and our being human is a great mystery. And you can choose to descend into it. Carl Jung used to say, where your pain and suffering is great, and we all suffer every day in different ways for different reasons at different times. Where your pain and suffering is great, don't just stick your little toe and go, ooh. Jump right in and go to the middle of the pain and see how it will transform you and bring you eternal life. That's also a quote from the Gospel of Thomas by Jesus. And <clears throat> Joseph Campbell used to say, I still remember him acting this out, <laughs> he used to say, <clears throat> when you know that you're falling off a cliff, don't just shrink back and try to grab onto the cliff again and just stop the process. Make a swan dive out of it. Just go for it and just dive down into your depths to find your deliverance and your divinity. This is a song that I wrote about this.
the next song, some of you, you may know from the civil rights movement, but it's sung around the, the world. And I'm suggesting that it's a call from the Earth Mother, from our ancestors, the many two millions of years we know of at least, and all our animal relations to come to understand the oneness of what we are together and what we can do. I'll read the words and then I'll play the song. Well, 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 who's that calling? Well, 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 hold my hand. Well, 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 night is a fallen. Spirit is a moving all over this land. So whether you lost your job, or whether you got really sick, or whether a close friend left you, or someone died in your life, all of which we all experience all the time, or a pet left and died, or whatever, we need to take sincerely what these experiences are so we can heal and learn and transmute these, which is what a hero, a heroine does. And whatever symptoms you have, mental or emotional symptoms, these are just symptoms. There's a deeper underlying cause that you can get at. It's necessary to get at. And so <clears throat> anything that happens in your life is simply a call. And most people don't listen to the calling of their physical body, and then they can get ill. We all do that. I've done that many times. Or our mind is speeding around, and we never learn meditation to slow our mind so we can actually get something productive done with our day. And our emotions are wrapped up in fear and anger and road rage, even in Victoria. And we then yell at the ones we love the most and who care for us the most. Now, I know none of you in this room have ever had any of those experiences. That's all right. I have. So I'm, I'm owning and you know, part of the thing about being a hero is you need to be open, keep it real, be authentic, be vulnerable, and just say it the way it is. This next song is by my favorite composer, Ray Fine Williams from England. And it's a song, one of the five mystical songs he wrote. It's called The Call. So what this means is, <clears throat> I'm going to read you the words. It's a poem he did not write, but he put it to music. And I'll stand up and I'll read this for you. The call, come my way, my truth, my life. Such a way as gives us breath. Such a truth as ends all strife. Such a life as killeth death. 
become my light, my feast, my strength, such a light as shows a feast, such a feast as man's in length, such a strength as makes his ghast. Come, my joy, my love, my heart, such a joy as none can move, such a love as none can part, such a heart as joys in love. When you take the path of your own journey, individuation, independence, then what can happen is you have a longing for love, past love, present love. And so this next piece, some of you will know, and the feeling of all this, I think, speaks for itself.
the last piece, where the first part, which is departure, is actually taken from the <coughs> second piano concerto by Dmitry Shostakovich, who was a well-known Russian composer during the time of Stalin. And um, <coughs> this is a song about war, chaos, sadness, loss, uh, and um, just deep grief. And I think, again, this embodies what we all feel when we're trying to find our individual path. It's a very moving piece, and I hope I do some justice. It's a second adagio movement. Thank mm -hmm. you. 